Good evening. Hello, dear friends. It's 7 p.m. on the clock, so our festival is going on. Guzel Kostina and Sergei Kostina are here. Today is our ninth day, and we are back to the topic of book pelting. Yelena Smirnova has already made a speech, and she offered her tutorial about how to create a crocodile. Today we have an incredible and amazing author of felted toys. Irina Polikova will make her speech today. She is a real artist. She creates truly alive animals. At least I get the feeling when I see it. With a soul, a character and a mood. You'll see it. Make you feel welcome. Irina, it's your time. Good evening, dear friends. I'm really glad to see so many people. I express my sincere gratitude to Sergei for his invitation to such a wonderful event. I'm Irina Polekova. Today I'll speak to you about the biggest hobby I have – toy spotting. Maybe I even will involve you. Now I'd like to speak about interesting topics which are close to felted toys creation. In the end, I'll show you a step-by-step -step workshop about an easy and effective way to tone the toy's surface. And I will show you my first video tutorial, so if you'll have a desire to buy it, you can buy it. Let's start. As I told you already, I am Irina Polekova. I live and work in Moscow. I am a black and white artist. I am graduated from Moscow Polygraph Institute, artistic faculty. Here you can see some of my graphic works. These are illustrations for a magazine. And of course, you can notice that I am a truly animal painter. My other drawings you will see during my presentation. Since 2007 I have been doing felting. I create animals. Also, I develop my own method of felting and a study problem – an alive toy. Let's speak about toys. Maybe many of you read or heard that statement. A qualitative felted toy should be very solid to make it possible to knock by it on a table. But it's too controversial. It doesn't fit to reality every time. This statement suits to a felted sculpture, which is entirely made from wool. You can see an example on the slide. A toy with moving fixing details, paws on the head, must be felted as good as possible. It takes hours to felt it. But there are ways to felt a toy quick and easy. One of those ways – a souvenir toy on a wire skeleton. You don't have to make them solid. Meanwhile, they keep form and can change their position thanks to the wire frame. These toys are not for an active game. There is another interesting technology of felting toys. These toys have felted surface, so they could have different stuff material as teddy bears. Felted toy could be different at its technological characteristics. Meanwhile, they'll have a high quality. The conclusion? If you use a toy as it intended and it is not damaged, its appearance doesn't ruin, so it is of a high quality. I demonstrate you my crafts. Start with my first ones, and I'll tell you about them. And then I will show you my very first toy. This is it. A bunny. I made all typical mistakes when I felt it. I broke needles, poked my fingers. But that is how all that started. This is a funny group of a cartoon-like fox terriers. They look like portraits because I tried to repeat as precise as possible all spots. These are two portrait works, Dane's cartoon-like. You see, I used to like doing big noses for toys. It will be more technically and figurally complicated works. The Bulldog is the first work which was exhibited in Vachtanov gallery. Most of all, I like doing toys with moving paws and the head. They are alive thanks to their agility. Another example of that kind of toys. You can make different positions for them. 
It is very interesting to make photo sets with them. It's like they're a leaf on a picture. I like doing miniatures a lot. There is a matchbox near toys. Its height is 2 inches. I rarely make big toys. Usually they are not more than 6 or 8 inches. And bunnies are my favorite toy personages and the most frequent walks among my beginners. Dash hounds is one of the popular dogs breed in Russia. They are very interesting in their appearance, intelligent and clever, and they have an incredible sense of humor. Another dash hound, and this is a super dash hound, I mean Bassett. I like dogs, I like two of them, but I create cats as well. Our opinion about a real-life animal is not always correspond with the toy image of that animal. For example, my friends always says to me about the mouse from the left picture. Gosh, I'm scared of mice, but this one is so cute. It's so wonderful we can share our thoughts and emotions through our craft. Another example. I make toy bull terrier with a pleasure. Bulldogs are incredible models. I treat them not like dogs, but like humanoids. Another example. Uh, people often tell me disapprovingly, why are your toys so sad? I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, not in each case. I would say they have a distracted, neutral snout expression. I prefer to make toys someone could play with. A neutral expression of a snout allows to fantasize. Look at the kitten in the middle. It had large eyes. His mouth is open a bit. It's surprised by something. I opened the mouth and now he is always surprised. You see these toys today and they have other images. If a toy has an expressive emotion, it would could change. Just get a close look. A creative process is different for everyone. For example, I work simultaneously with many projects. Look what I have as a result. This is a small part of something that gathers slowly and surely. But there are some advantages as well and unexpected ones too. I'll show you what I mean. This cat, you've seen it twice, could be a bunny. Its pattern wasn't used for like a year. When I remembered about it, suddenly I understood. It wasn't a bunny at all, it's a cat. Sometimes it's useful to have a rest from a toy and then to get a close look again. The longest project I have. This is a big toy, almost like a newborn baby. I show you main stages of sewing process how it changed and so on. Here you are, toys I'm working with now. You've seen an elephant in the beginning of my presentation. A dog is almost like a portrait of my dog. Ideas could come from everywhere unexpectedly. How not to forget and lose them all? Here you can see my copybooks and notebooks. I draw and write my thoughts, skeleton, and ideas. I recommend you to do the same. A frequent question. How to make a toy alive? To make it look natural? First, you need a desire. You ought to want that a lot. And then you will overcome all difficulties. It is important to watch attentively real animals. Love them. Study their anatomy. It helps you to avoid some fails. Even if you plan to make a stylish toy, you have to know about the real one too. Here is an interesting example how important to know animals' particularities. I offer you a little game. Look at this slide. Where is the daddy of this little one elephant? What do you think? Here is an answer. An elephant's father is number two. An elephant number one cannot be the parent of a baby elephant 
because it's an African elephant and baby elephant is an Indian one. So let's talk about workshops and students. Earlier I lead workshops in big groups. It makes sense to work with a sampler. Here is the process of work. A kitten which is unfinished yet is looking at us confusingly. Here you are happy masters. Now I prefer to make individual workshops or workshops in small groups. So my students have a possibility to felt any toys they want. Let's look at some works by my wonderful students. I like that my students work are so different and beautiful. I don't dictate them my own style and vision. That's a funny company. Completely different toys in one workshop. I fell in love with a bunny. Jeboa's two friends make them. They have moving joints in their lower paws. Another Jeboa. A Jeboa in a workshop on a left picture. Another picture Elena sent me from home. Lana Sutugina. She is very talented and determined. These are her works she made by herself after workshop. A bear is charming. I didn't want to let it go. These works are qualitative. Another student of mine. What is it? Attention! A toy is big. This is what he have as a result. Tatiana finished it at home. A fabulous dash hound. These are works by Ekaterina Turina and her daughter. A squirrel is impressive and very complicated too. Each finger and the tail has its own wire skeleton. This is a very characteristic pig. Chihuahua. That was an individual workshop. Marina Klimova is very gifted. She can do jointed dolls. A lion is wonderful, with moving joints of paws and the head. It is very pleasant work of high quality. Yelena Chernobrov, also a wonderful master, felt professionally and not toys only. I was really impressed by this work. This is a chimmunk. My student did it herself. It is a very difficult job after only one workshop. In the end, a work by Oksana Kostina. She is very determined, gifted and talented. A fabulous creator. Now I'd like to speak a little about needles for felting. Everyone knows almost everything. There is a lot of information about it in the internet. But now I'd like to tell you something that you'll not learn anywhere. There is no information about size and cross section. But there are some other legends. Look, I circled them to show where you should search it for. They look like incisions you will be hardly noticed. A needle with a customary tip and an extra sharp tip. This type of a needle box even thick felted sampler. Sometimes a realistic toy get the feeling that you've seen a stuffed animal and not a toy. Uh, so yeah, it's real, but something isn't right. And quite the opposite is true. Look at this photo. A kid's reaction was, oh my gosh, a bull! Why does it lie? Did it fall down? Is it sleeping? Why is it sleeping with his eyes opened? A child considered it as an alive animal. I think maybe eyes of a toy are alive on a picture. Let's speak about eyes. Happy, good made eyes make a life even not really good toy. But unsuccessful eyes could ruin a toy hopelessly. These are drawings by my students. Here either an extra pupil of an eye or the drawing an apple of an eye inside an eye pit. Here are examples of eyes for toys. And of course the choice isn't restricted by them. You can make alive eyes 
from other materials. I offer you to get a close look how a toy with different eyes look like. Usually mouse eyes are from plastic beads of different sizes. A semi-transparent colored beads. A baby lion has its eyes. A pupil is drawn by acrylic paint and an eye is covered by lacquer. To make it look alive, an eye should be glittered. Cat's eyes are made from semi-transparent buttons with a pearl effect. A pupil is drawn by an acrylic paint and covered by lacquer. These toys have eyes drawn on semi-spherical buttons. An eye is covered by the same laser strap. An eye is covered by some layers of a lacquer. A widespread variant. You can use a glass of plastic eye or even a bead and the wool as an eye is white. Recently I started to use glass eyes for a bones, dolls babies. And ball gentle dolls. They look so alive. Often we make felted eyes for felted dolls. <laughs> Literally, draw by a wool in a doll's face. See? Unfortunately, I have no time to felt another eye to scare my students. In the end, I'd like to tell you how much eyes could change a toy. This is the same toy with different eyes. Now I'd like to continue with a mini workshop and show you how to make a toning for a surface by acrylic paints. Don't be afraid of mistakes. Look at my first unsuccessful try to make a toning by acrylic paint. This poor dog knocked loudly on the table because acrylic paint dried out and became as a crust on a toy's surface. Of course, we don't want it. A bulldog has a dark snout. A cat has a toning by wool in ears, ear tips, eyelids and the snout. A texture of wool doesn't suffer, no crusts on a toy's surface. It is important a surface you want to tone was felted very well. Now I will tell you how to use an acrylic correctly. We need an acrylic paint, two small jars, pure water, cotton swabs, cotton pads and the toy for toning. You need to dissolve an acrylic paint in a water. Try different concentrations of the solution. I recommend you to use a sampler for the same wool as a toy you want to tune. There shouldn't be undissolved particles in water. Usually I dent my fingertips in the pure water and splash a surface. A toy shouldn't be dripping wet, just lightly wet. Touch a surface with a cotton swab. Press a swab and roll it over the surface distributing paint. You'll have a tender watercolored tone. Now an interesting thing. It happens you made mistakes sometimes, drop too much paint. Why an acrylic paint is still wet? Use a cotton pad. Look, you can see it on a picture. Press a pad and paint is absorbed. If a pigment is absorbed, if you cannot remove it by a cotton pad, try to remove it with a stream of water. It makes sense only when the paint is not dried out. Now I'd like to offer you my very first video tutorial about felting sculpture. This is my very first tutorial. Let's be friends. Felt sculpture toy. It will suit even to beginners and I'm sure for someone who had already an experience in toys felting. Here you find an information about supplies for felting. You'll learn how to work by needles correctly, methods of works with different types of sheep wool. Also I'll tell you about some serious mistakes which are easy to avoid. It is an unusual workshop. Its target is not to do exactly this puppy. I offer you to learn the technique of dry felting so good to make experiments and create and not to copy a sampler. I disclose a secret. 
I made a puppet before that workshop. During this tutorial, I will fade his brother. It will be bigger. This way you'll see all details better. I show you how to create a toy of any complexity and change an image during the process of creation. How to join details, how to achieve a position you need, how to make a toy solid, how to avoid misshaping when we make it solid. I'll demonstrate you it as easy as possible. Usually beginners has a lot of difficulties with eyes. I will explain you in details how to make eyes and eyelids correctly and how to place them on a toy snout. Surface treatment is a final and very important stage of a doll's creation. At your eyes I will make its surface smooth and I'll show you two ways of toning by wool or by acrylic paint. This workshop has a wonderful long-term effect. Self-confidence, inspiration, ideas, an interest in toward and observance, a creative disinhibition. You need only one thing, a great desire to study. If you are interested in this workshop, buy it. This is my first and only one workshop I made myself. I was asked a lot about a video tutorial. Now we have one. The usual price is 48 euros 30 or 54 US dollars. But during that festival, you'll have a unique possibility to buy it for 40 euros 30 or 44 US dollars point 90 during three days. Click the banner to buy a workshop. Thank you for your attention. Have a very good evening. Have a fabulous evening. And I wish you a good luck in your handicraft. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Irina. Thank you. Thank you for your speech. Now here comes the most favorite part of all performances. Uh, I mean the part when I talk how to pay. Here is our page. Banner is on the left side. You can see a puppy. To buy it, press the banner. This is a page of a video, a description of all lessons in English. You can see a price and the button buy now. Push the button and now you are on a page of sales. You can choose either PayPal or you can input your card's data and PIN code and that's all. After a payment you will get a link to download that incredible video tutorial. Tomorrow Yulia Natalevich will make her speech. She is a great master of textile dolls and she always prepares something interesting for us. So we are looking forward to see her. We'll be glad to see you here tomorrow. If you have any questions, write them on our email you see under the banner. See you tomorrow, the same place. Have a good evening. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>